On Tuesday, the Senate will start debating a bill that could put the ACT in the Northern Territory back in control of their euthanasia laws, more than two decades after the NT's landmark legislation of the practice was voided by the Commonwealth. Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm is behind the latest push, but says he's very disappointed Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull broke what he says was a deal. He joined me a short time ago. Senator, welcome to National Wrap. Thank you. You've been weighing up how to retaliate after saying Malcolm Turnbull had broken a deal with you on a bill to restore the Territory's power to legalise voluntary euthanasia. So what will you do? Well, it's a pretty serious issue for the government to not stick to a deal made with a member of the crossbench. The government needs eight out of ten of the crossbenchers to get a majority in the Senate. So it's always looking to us to support it. Um, it, it obviously has to do deals with us in order to get our support. And uh, if, if I and the other members of the other crossbench um, see the government is not sticking to its deals, that has pretty serious implications. I mean, how can you do a deal with the government if you think it's not going to stick to that deal? So, you know, I, I don't think this is over. I, the government is now feeling a little reluctant to bring this on for its own internal reasons. But uh, I don't think we, can, we could say this is the final word. So when you say that you'd like to retaliate, have you had communications with the Prime Minister over the weekend? Where are those discussions at? No, and I, I haven't actually used the word retaliate myself. Um, there are consequences for the government with not keeping to its deals, um, very significant consequences. Um, but no, I, I mean, I'm not feeling vindictive about this. I'm just... Uh, um, annoyed that uh, what was a deal appears no longer to be um, a deal in the eyes of the government. Um, but um, as I said, the, the issue for the government is, um, well, how can they do future deals if they're not going to stick to past deals? Um, there's quite a lot of legislation coming up in the Senate uh, which Labor and the Greens oppose and for which they will need eight out of ten crossbenchers to, to achieve a majority. Some of that legislation they regard as really important. Um, and, uh, um, you know, they're going to have to uh, talk to the crossbench in, in the nicest possible terms, if I can put it that way, um, in order to get our support. So will you withdraw your support for those bills that you talk about until you can ensure that this euthanasia bill is discussed in the lower house? Yeah, until, until the deal with the Prime Minister that I negotiated nearly two years ago um, is upheld. And that means uh, they have to allow it to be debated and voted on on a conscience vote basis in the House if it passes the Senate. Until they're prepared to accept that that's the deal and they stick to the deal, then there, uh, there, are, well, there are a couple of areas where uh, I, my support um, or my opposition has to be, can be taken for granted. The company tax cuts is a good example. I'm a, the Liberal Democrats are a low tax party, I'll always vote for lower taxes. But there are 50 or 60 bills waiting in the queue to be dealt with. Can you give me some examples? Um, well, yes. Uh, there's industrial relations stuff, there's reform to superannuation governance, um, there's, uh, oh, there, there are heaps of them. There's a, a tax on um, NBN customers, $7.50, which is to pay for NBN in the country. It's, it's, I could be talked into or out of that sort of thing. Most of the bills that, are, that I'm talking about here don't offend my small, or they, they're not really relevant to my small government, low tax, get out of my life philosophy of the Liberal Democrats. They are just um, uh, mucking around with something which is a relatively unsatisfactory policy to start with. So uh, for me to go either way is pretty easy. Now my history with the government bills is to give them the benefit of the doubt quite often unless, as I said, it offends my small government principles. So even if you want to get this bill into the lower house, you need a sponsor for the bill. Do you have yeah. one? Yes. Yes, I have a sponsor. I can't tell you who it is, but yes, I have a sponsor. Um, I'll be announcing who that is later this week. Um, and so I have somebody who will pick it up in the House. Um, it will then become a question of whether the procedural uh, means can get through. So in other words, if there's a majority uh, in the House, we'll vote for the bill to be brought on, to be debated and voted on. Most private senators' bills 
don't get to that stage because the government won't allow it. Most bills, even when they pass the Senate, they get uh, transferred to the House as a, as a message and that's the end of them. They just go on a long list and they never get debated and considered and voted on. I have to get my bill out of that situation and for that to occur I need a sponsor in the House but I also need the government to agree to allow that to occur. That's, that's where the crunch issue is. What level of support do you have in the Senate? How far off are you from securing the numbers to get your bill successfully passed through the upper house? Well, um, it looks like we've got uh, somewhere between 40 and 42 votes and we need, we need 39 for a majority. So we're feeling reasonably comfortable that, that we have enough for it to pass. Um, I personally haven't been doing the numbers. Or I've spoken to a few of my Senate colleagues just to determine their position. But uh, a number of organisations, including Richard Di Natale's office, uh, Richard Di Natale helped me get uh, the, the, man, the motion up in the Senate uh, to, um, uh, to allow the bill to be debated this week. Um, and also Andrew Denton's uh, and his people have been uh, doing the numbers uh, for me as well. And they're saying 40-42. Uh, Why do you want to do this now? Why is this important now? Well, look, it's been on the notice paper for uh, well, since 2015, um, it lapsed when the election was called and I reintroduced it after I was re-elected. To the Liberal Democrats, to Libertarians, the right to control your life and not have the government say you can or you can't do things with your life is fundamental to us. Now, we all acknowledge that we have a right to take our own lives, suicide. That's not a crime and nobody disputes that it's our business. My problem is this, as soon as you get to the point where you are too feeble, too weak, too sick to end your life yourself, the government says, oh no, you're not allowed to do that anymore. Now I acknowledge the concerns of people who say, but it's a slippery slope, you know, you'll end up um, killing people who don't want to die. I acknowledge those concerns. So. I mean, I, my, my view is let's frame the laws that ensure consent um, is genuine. Now, um, there's no implied consent, there's no assumption of consent just because you're sick. You have to explicitly say, <coughs> excuse me, you have to say, this is what I want to occur. But for my illness, my feebleness, I would take my own life. That's the situation that I don't think it's any business of the government to be telling us, no, you can't, we know better than you. We own our own bodies, we own our own lives. They're not, it's not up to the government to tell us when, and when uh, we can't uh, uh, bring that to an end. Senator, the Prime Minister says there was no deal. The deal you talk about for it to be able to go to the lower house. Do you have any evidence that there was a deal? Yeah, I, I actually, I haven't heard him say there was no deal. He is he is certainly backpedalling, and I know the reasons why he is backpedalling. I don't think he has specifically said there was no deal. Um, there were witnesses, there were staff members present. Um, I don't want to go naming anybody. Um, but um, yeah, he's, he wishes there wasn't a deal, and um, he'd like to ignore the fact that we did a deal. But I don't think he's specifically saying there was no deal. But you're saying that there were witnesses. What is your evidence for why he, in your language, is backpedalling now? Well, he has a problem with his own party. Um, there are conservatives within his party who, you know, basically they hate uh, the Prime Minister more than they hate the opposition for reasons best known to themselves. I don't, I don't get it myself. Um, and um, so they're, they're looking for every opportunity to, to give him a hard time. Um, he's very sensitive to that. And uh, they're conservatives, they're social conservatives. Um, and uh, so he doesn't want to give them any ammunition. Now, I understand he himself is personally opposed to my bill, so I don't quite know what they're, what they're on about. But uh, the reality is he wanted the ABCC legislation to be passed. He wanted my support. It wouldn't have passed without my support. He did the deal in order to get that through. And if you recall, it was a double dissolution issue as well. And uh, Tony Abbott couldn't get it through. So he did get it through with my support, but there was, there was a price, and the price was allow my bill to be debated um, in the Senate, and, and if it passed the Senate, uh, to be introduced and debated in the House and voted on on a conscience vote basis as well. That's the deal. Now, the fact that it's now uncomfortable for him 
um, given that he's got this conservative faction within his own party. I mean, I'm sympathetic to that, but that doesn't change the fact a deal is a deal. Senator, just finally, have you reflected on your behaviour since the last sitting day in June? Well, um, I'm not sure where you're heading with that. It's a pretty open question, actually. You remember what happened the last sitting day in June. Mm. There's been lots of reporting. In fact, there's been a defamation case since that's been filed by Sarah Hansen Young. Mm. Have you reflected on that period and do you have regrets? Well, the defamation case is based on her accusation that I called her uh, a misandrist and a hypocrite. So all this slut-shaming stuff, all this nonsense, uh, which is total fiction, um, is not in her statement of claim. Now, I'll be defending myself against this uh, defamation claim uh, quite strenuously. I'll be seeking costs in the event that I win, and I expect to win. I don't think she has any sound basis whatsoever for, um, for claiming defamation. So to the extent that you're asking, have I reflected on it? Sure, I have. There's been a fair amount of interaction with my lawyers. And um, as I said, um, I think her claims are totally without merit. So you would do everything the same way as you did on that last sitting day? That would play out exactly the same way if you had your time again? Well, you know, private conversations or in, in, you know, individual one-on-one -on -one conversations, when you've got somebody uh, standing a metre away from you, um, uh, you know, a, a middle-aged uh, woman um, calling you a creep. Um, uh, it wouldn't matter whether, in fact, whether it was a woman or a man. It probably wouldn't matter what, what other circumstances uh, applied. Doing that a metre away from you, calling you a creep, for me to tell them to go and make love in another place, I'd probably do it uh, to anyone, absolutely anyone. So um, um, I don't think there's anything to, uh, to reflect on from that point of view. It's a perfectly natural human reaction, and uh, I'm a perfectly natural human. Senator, thanks for your time. My pleasure.